Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for watching this video. In Oneness, we are Jess and Abe. So this video is going to be sort of a connection to the last video, part two and part one of Convoluted Time. This video is just going to go through some questions and answers to kind of dive deeper into the whole spiral timeline and convoluted time. We're also going to bring forward some questions from the Facebook group such as how free will shifts as well as manifestation shifts when we open up into the spiral timeline into that 5D New Earth timeline. I want to first start by referencing um, this spiral hourglass timeline that I talked about in my convoluted time part one and part two. Um, as you can see it's like that linear now moment as well as the spirals um, and it also connects to this diagram that I drew with the now moment, the collective spiral timeline, the linear timeline portal, and the individual spiral timelines within the collective spiral timeline. Um, something that I also wanted to point out is the I know this gets even more convoluted, but the infinitiness, if that's a word, or infiniteness of time. So everything that I spoke about in convoluted time part one and part two, as complex as they can go, it can get even more complex, obviously. With everything that we spoke about aside, when you look at time from what it was shown to me it's like I have this little model of that spiral hourglass timeline and when you look at it sort of like straight on same thing goes for this this is a little bit better because it's smaller if you look at it straight on it's almost like what Abe showed me is it's basically like if you took this spiral hourglass timeline and everything that we spoke about in the spiral hourglass timeline in terms of all, you know, the linear timeline, in terms of all the spiral timeline information, even this spiral timeline information, everything that we went over that is basically contained within this spiral hourglass timeline, Imagine all of that here in this spiral, because in essence, when you look at the spiral hourglass timeline, it looks like a spiral and you just flatten it. If you flatten it, it is basically just a circle <laughs> with a spiral with a center, because that center is that now moment, that linear now moment. It's just a circle. So a few other things have kind of been unfolding um, over the last day or so since I put out the video of Convoluted Time Part 2. The first thing is that Abe drew my attention to vortexes, multiple vortexes happening. And they showed me the relationship between the whole spiral timeline and how we're just sort of perceiving it as a spiral timeline, as a spiral, when it's more like a vortex. They told me that the spiral, in essence, is just a vortex. Vortexes within vortexes within vortexes for infinity. But it's still relevant with all the information that we went over regarding the spiral in linear time. But now just imagine all of that in a vortex. It's just our interpretation and that perception for us to understand it a little bit better that presents it into this spiral way. So I had asked Abe, I said, so does this mean that we're just stuck in a never ending vortex? And Abe said, no, you're not stuck. Your energy is not stuck. It's just playing out the roller coaster ride in the grand most high vortex of Earth's experience. So going back to the whole flattened time, how everything kind of fits into this circular flattened shape. Um, Abe also brought forward, they told me 
look into the Dalmatian stone, that Dalmatian jasper stone. So I Googled it, I looked at it, and I said, what do you want me to know about this Dalmatian jasper stone? I'm going to put a picture up of Dalmatian jasper for you to take a look at. So they said all of those dots, those black dots, are individual spiral timelines. Not just one person's spiral timeline, but like in the whole mix of things. And so it's like imagine that jasper stone or having that jasper stone in your hand and that is kind of like that condensed version of the collective time and energy and then the dots on the stone represent each of the individuals having their own experience so literally where it's like we're in our own vr our own virtual reality within this bigger collective experience us as individuals within the collective are each going through our own vortex and it's represented by all of these little dots on this Dalmatian stone. Um, so I thought that was interesting because it's like we're not all in the same place within the placement of this collective spiral timeline. We're each having our own experience. There are some that's going to overlap. There's different sizes and shapes. It's... Um, interesting you can kind of draw your own conclusions when you look at this Dalmatian Jasper stone but I just wanted to present that information for you to kind of expand uh, your reference and mind regarding the individual spiral timeline and the collective spiral timeline and for sure different perspectives so I asked Abe how does this understanding of the Dalmatian Jasper Stone, this sort of condensed perspective, how does this fit in with infinity? And what came through was infinite in tone and frequency, infinite in motion, infinite in knowledge of oneness, infinite in energy, not of the universe, but of the earth, of Gaia. And then what came to me was that this Dalmatian stone, when you have it in your hand and you're seeing it from this perspective, is a capsule of the Earth's time and energy. And then I asked, is this capsule that I'm seeing of the entire history of Earth's timeline and energy or just the now moment? And what came through was that it is just the now moment. It's like a capture of time in the now moment, put into capsule form that continues repeating on for infinity. The now moment repeating for infinity. Now, this concept of infinity and things happening for infinity has been coming up um, in the information that I've been sort of getting from Abe which I'm going to start talking more about, but I think this is why they first wanted me to talk about timelines and grasping this idea of infinity um, or even our perspective of timelines. It's all very confusing and very convoluted. Um, this is connecting me back to what's been coming into my awareness lately, which is the Taurus field. I'm going to put a link um, in the description to a video that I was directed to in terms of um, how that Taurus field looks around the body and basically like you are a vortex. I want to make that connection here in terms of us being in our now moment is us in this Taurus field, this vortex, and Abe is connecting us in our Taurus field, our individual Taurus fields, to each of these dots on this Dalmatian Jasper stone. So it's like, this is the now moment on this stone, and each of these dots are each of each individual in their own Taurus field, having their own experience in their own vortex within that greater collective energy of not only the collective in terms of people, but the collective in terms of Gaia and the Earth's experience as a whole, as everything being part of that wholeness and that oneness of not our experience or our existence, but Gaia's, the Earth's experience and energy and timeline of 
the earth. I'm sure the Taurus field information will come forward at a later time since I'm putting all these things together, but just keep that in mind as well. So one question that came through the Facebook group was, is there still free will in a spiral timeline? And what came through was no. No free will means no duality. I asked, will we have free will to make our own decisions? And what came through was not through free will, but free will will be transformed into open will. Open will is the removal of duality and open to that universal light. So if we go back to this spiral hourglass timeline, when we're in these linear timeline portals, we have what's known as free will. Um, But what's being described by Abe is that when we open up into 5D, when we start to open up into the spirals, we don't have free will necessarily in the way that we had it before while we were in linear time or this linear timeline portal. What happens is we transform free will into what they call open will. And this open will is the integration of more of this collective, open, creative, universal light energy. Abe goes on to say that lost knowledge opens gilded knowledge of the light timeline, what they call the spiral timeline. And that opens up into the collective open creative energy, which is known to us as the collective unconscious mind or that collective unconscious energy. The light timeline or the spiral timeline was integrated in Lemuria and Atlantis. In this light timeline, will is not free as the light timeline is in open will, meaning that your will is open to the entire universe, not just planet Earth. Final timeline, meaning that 5D New Earth timeline, is in the light timeline, that spiral timeline. It's in open will on the planet. Open will is greater than free will. It is not duality-based or stuck in prison or sin. So I'm sensing that behind that 3D free will is the sense that we are free willed, but in the confines of a quote unquote prison. So in the linear timelines, there's free will. When we open up into the spiral timeline, your free will opens up to that greater consciousness. It opens up to expansion and the integration of that universal open creative energy. In the linear time, it's very much closed off and you only have free will, not open will. Or more so, it's a restricted open will in the confines of your linear time. I asked, will there still be duality as we open up into the spiral timeline, into 5D? And what came through was yes. Open will means that duality is integrated into the quote-unquote soup. It transforms into the higher perspective duality. So we talk about the 5D soup in a couple of previous videos. I'm going to put those links below. But basically 5D is a soup of good and bad, whether it's knowledge or experiences or anything. But the good and the bad are integrated together into a higher frequency soup where the bad knowledge or experiences are transformed within the higher frequencies and where we're able to learn from those bad experiences and view them with higher perspectives of oneness in a way that serves us rather than separates us. And we go through and talk about this in part two when we go further into the spiral timeline and how as we expand opening into the spiral timeline, we open up with that higher perspective to view everything that came before us in this connected sense, in this connected perspective, this oneness perspective. Abe is showing me that when we are here in the linear timelines, duality is much more present and quote unquote closer to us because we don't have any of the collective unconscious energy integrated into this linear timeline. 
we only mostly have that collective conscious energy to work with. So when we open up into the spiral timeline, it feels like duality, it doesn't dissolve, but it opens up more to be integrated into the energy of the collective unconscious, that higher frequency energy in order to be transformed. Abraham also explained that the spiral hourglass timeline is the natural ebb and flow of the universe, constantly in expansion and contraction, like the breath, an inhale and an exhale. The collective spiral hourglass timeline moves with the energy of the universe, not against it. I then asked, in a spiral timeline, would we know everything of our life from start to finish? And what came through was yes, on a soul level. In the physical, most of you would continue to only know where you are and where you have been, but not be aware of your further expansion until you get there. In the spiral timeline, you would not remember the linear timeline in the linear way. You would see it as part of the whole, just as right now, as knowledge holders exist between the linear and the spiral timelines of 3D and 5D Earths, knowledge holders are remembering their lost knowledge not from the linear memory, but from the soul or the unconscious memory held in the higher one mind of 5D, as well as the higher one spiral timeline of 5D. I asked, when we move into spiral timeline, would we not remember the linear timeline? And what came through was because linear timeline would be stirred into that soup pot, that high frequency soup pot, that higher perspective soup pot, knowledge holders would very much remember linear timeline, but not in a linear way. You will remember it in a spiral way where everything is not linear, but connected or mostly connected. What is remembered as separate in a linear timeline is remembered as connected in a spiral timeline. I then asked, is there a start to the spiral hourglass timeline? And what came through was infinity. It aligns to the universal spiral energy, the ebb and flow, the expansion and contraction, the inhale and the exhale. Even though it might seem like an expansion and contraction of energy, even that contraction of energy offers expansion in the outermost realms where infinity keeps expanding. There is only expansion. Think of the very act of contractions in the act of birthing a child. The contractions are necessary for the child to be birthed and into the new world they awaken to, a new energy of expansion beyond your wildest dreams. Even through the contractions of energy within the universe, such as the contractions of your spiral hourglass timeline, there comes expansion in the continuation of your spiral hourglass timeline, but also in the outermost reaches of the universe that keeps expanding. I then asked, I thought that there was no time or space in the universe outside of 3D. So going back to the spiral hourglass timeline, we have time in this linear timeline portal. So even if we rise to higher dimensions, like the Lemurians existed in the 13th dimension, so they still existed in this spiral hourglass or in this spiral timeline, I thought that even if we reach up into those higher dimensions, that time would cease to exist. So I wanted to have them explain more about this. And what came through was that your collective spiral hourglass timeline is still within the confines of quote unquote time as you are incarnated on a physical planet and not yet merged with the non-physical where there is no time or space. But when you open up into the spiral timeline, you are less tied to time because of the expansion of consciousness and energy merging with the collective open creative energy known as the unconscious one mind or the unconscious energy. So in essence, spiral hourglass timeline is quote unquote no time. The time aspect 
opens up from the linear mindset into the more expansive mindset on how you view time. When the energy shifts into linear time, the energy of quote unquote time becomes much more confining and tangible for the collective because they lose their connection to that open, creative, unconscious energy, which connects them to who they truly are and connects them more to no time. Another question from the Facebook group is. Will the collapsing timelines begin to limit the paths or options we are trying to line up with? And so this person is basically asking when the linear timelines collapse and merge into that one higher 5D timeline, the spiral timeline, will there be limitations to the paths or options that we have as, a, as an individual um, in our purpose, in our mission, etc.? And what came through was no, because on a soul level, you incarnated during this exact time in your Earth's history to align to the shift into the new golden age of Gaia. This is your path. On a soul level, you still each have your own individual paths and missions, which goes into our own individual spiral timelines. But for the most of you, your individual paths and missions will align to the ascension of Gaia. For others, you will not realize it, but on an energetic scale, your mission will also align to that of this great shift. Whether your missions involve you building a community, being part of a community, creating new inventions, offering new ideas, impacting a crowd of thousands, or impacting the immediate people around you, your neighbors, your friends, your families, there is no mission too big or too small that is better than anyone else's. You are each on your own individual path, and that path was chosen as part of an integrated wholeness in your collective. Each person has a role to play, no matter how big or how small, and each role that each person plays is as significant as the next. Wherever you are, if you align your energy to the energy of the great shift of Gaia and the ascension energy of the universe and of your planet, you will shift into the path that you have always been trying to align to on a soul level. This is why you must first work on your own energy, your inner energy alignment to your own highest good and to the highest frequency of your highest self in order to catch the wave of the ascension and expansion energy and it will allow you to align to your highest purpose. Yes, of course, there are some souls who chose to incarnate on the planet and chose not to ascend. They choose to ride the wave of 3D, which will just become more and more confining and limiting in the physical, yes, but only because it becomes more and more confining and limiting in the 3D mind. In this aspect, yes, for these souls, their 3D Earth physical experience may seem like it's becoming more and more limiting, but in fact, they are expanding more and more on a soul level as well. There is no correct path. The 5D path is a more expansive path in the physical because it is more expansive in the heart and the mind. You choose the path that you take on a soul level before you incarnate. You also have the option to change your soul path if you choose not to want to continue on 3D. You can choose to shift into 5D. It's a free will planet and you can choose to shift your contracts that you made on a soul level. You are just playing out what you originally chose on a soul level in the physical way. Either way, your soul is expanding. For those of you on the 5D Ascension path, you ask if the collapsing timeline will limit your paths. Definitely not. In this Ascension process, there is only expansion, and you will integrate with expansion like you've never known before. Only in your minds are there limitations. The collapse of the 3D linear timelines allows for the collapse of the quote-unquote prison timelines that you have been stuck in. The possibilities of expansion in the new one spiral timeline that aligns to the universal energy of light opens you up to more expansive opportunities and possibilities and paths that you could never have imagined in the confines of your current 3D minds. The next question on the Facebook group was, does the spiral timeline change our manifestation techniques? And is there anything that we can do differently to leverage the spiral? 
So what came through was that you can leverage the spiral timeline in knowing that all is connected and that there is only oneness and love. The spiral timeline aligns you to the higher one mind. Your manifestation techniques will greatly shift with the integration of the higher one mind. You begin to live knowingly in your vibrational vortexes of creation, and you will begin to move towards instant manifestation, much like how the Lemurians were masters of manifestation. This comes with your continued evolution into your higher and even higher states of consciousness after the great shift into 5D in the many years ahead. Manifestation as you shift into 5D will be much like how we have been teaching you. Get into the vortex and align to what you want. Feel your desires into existence. However, in 5D, you will notice that you align to your vibrational vortexes much more easily and manifesting what you want will no longer be much of that roller coaster ride of emotions as it is in 3D. Your manifestations will be of higher vibration and will be pulled from the heart in oneness and love. You will automatically sort of align to your manifestation as you integrate more oneness and love because you're integrating more of this collective unconscious mind, that open creative energy in which your vibrational vortexes are held. As you open up and integrate more of that oneness and love, you are integrating your vibrational vortexes. And we talk more about manifestation in terms of shifting into this higher one mind, um, releasing the collective conscious, integrating the collective unconscious um, in the video where we're talking about integrating a higher one mind. Um, I'm going to put the link to that video below if you want a little bit more in terms of manifestation in 5D. There was also a good question about contrast. So someone said that they thought that contrast, including good and lack of good, was necessary for existence, or rather manifestation. For example, she asks, how do you know what is tall if there is no short, or joy if there is no sadness? If we are shifting into good with no bad, how will it work without the comparisons or that contrast? I didn't channel information for this question um, prior to this video, so I'm just going to tap in quickly and see what comes through regarding this question. Okay, so in terms of contrast, what's coming through is like contrast exists in the lower dimensions where we are in 3D, linear time. We need contrast in order to know what we want by knowing what we do not want. It helps send stronger rockets of desire into what we do want. The problem is that in lower dimension, in lower density where we're at, in 3D and in linear time, we don't have that connection to oneness and love needed to manifest our desires. Contrast is not necessary in the manifestation process. What is necessary in the manifestation process is that connection to oneness and love. It is aligning to what you want. That is all that's necessary for manifestation. The reason why contrast was introduced to us here in the physical is because as physical beings existing in a 3D plane, existing on the earth plane, we have contrast. So how can we use contrast in a way that serves us? In that manifestation process because so many people are at places in their lives in which they cannot manifest from where they are so when abraham was talking about manifestation and using contrast to send rockets of desire through esther hicks through abraham hicks it's because in our minds here existing in our 3d worlds we needed instead of being in that contrast instead of being in that place that we do not want it allowed us to shift our perspective into using that place that we do not want shifting our perspective into knowing now what we do want because we know what we do not want so it was shifting our perspective in a way that empowered us to get into the space of what we do want to get into the space of that love and oneness frequency our connection to that collective unconscious, that open creative energy, that universal light energy, that is that creation, that is that non, 
physical vortex, that non-physical vibrational vortex in which in linear time, in this portal, in this 3D lower density, lower dimensional space, we have to tap into that non-physical vibrational vortex, which is that unconscious energy in order to pull in and, and kind of align to that oneness and love frequency. As we open up into the spiral timeline and connect more, integrate more of this unconscious energy, this open creative energy of universal light, we will naturally begin to align and integrate with our love and oneness energy if we choose to use that to create, right? Because all energy is neutral until it's directed. As we, di- as we in- embody and integrate more love and oneness, we direct, we play with that open creative energy. We play with it in that love and oneness energy, allowing us to create all of our desires. And that's how manifestation works in the higher dimensions as we move into the spiral timeline and integrate more of that open energy, that open creative energy. Contrast is not necessary for manifestation. As we open up into higher dimension into more of the spiral timeline we have that idea of contrast already but in a way that serves us in that oneness perspective we know what we do not want through our memories through our soul memories but in a way in which it serves the greater purpose in a way that it serves us rather than separates us So no, contrast is not necessary for existence or for manifestation. And then the last question was that when the event wave comes and releases us from the negative polarity, will it also release us from the blocks or the veil that is keeping us from our forgotten knowledge? So first of all, in terms of the event wave, I spoke about this um, in... One of my previous videos called um, The Event Wave Flash is right now. I'll put a link to that video below. Basically, as I was receiving this information about the spiral timelines, um, the collective spiral timeline, I was able to kind of view the, the event from this higher perspective. And it was shown to me that we are in the event. Um, the event, it has been kind of like... Um, it's almost like we have shifted the energy of the event based upon our attachment to it. So the way that we think about the event in terms of a one um, single event or single events is different than how it's perceived in the higher perspectives. So it's almost like we have to unravel and untangle what we're attached to when it comes to the event so that we can see that higher perspective. And so what was shown to me was that the flash of light encompassed this sort of time that we're in, in that overlapping of the 3D and the 5D. The flash of light was shown to me as sort of this portal of energy that we're going through in order to um, break apart the 3D from the 5D. It's this portal of energy that we are in right now that allows for the shifting or the integration of the higher energy and kind of births us or shoots us out into that spiral timeline or into those higher frequency timelines into the 5D um, higher dimension. That's another, it's like tying into the spiral timeline again. It's like seeing those different perspectives, seeing that heightened perspective and seeing how everything is connected to each other, even understanding how time works a little bit different. It's um, just a different perspective in the spiral timeline. You just have that greater, wider, heightened view of things so that you're able to see that bigger picture you're able to see the entire puzzle versus being just in that one puzzle piece and not understanding or not knowing what's around you or even not knowing what the puzzle is or how you fit into that puzzle going back to the question when the event wave comes and releases us from negative polarity will it also release us from the blocks or the veil that is keeping us from our forgotten knowledge Um, In terms of releasing us from the blocks or the veil, it's happening right now. We are releasing negative polarity right now. Um, We are releasing blocks. The veil is thinning, if not uber thin. Um, 
and forgotten knowledge is coming through to us, which is why we've been talking to you about retrieving your lost knowledge, um, because it's very much doable for you to do right now if you can adjust your frequency and kind of reach into your own spiral timeline. As we shift into this one higher mind of the collective unconscious, creating that higher consciousness for ourselves, moving into the collective spiral timeline, we're going to be able to retrieve more of our lost knowledge from Lemuria and Atlantis because we're going to see those timelines like Lemuria and Atlantis not as separate from us, but as fully integrated with where we are and how it's connected to our journey and our path right now. We are releasing all of those blocks. We're releasing all of the negative polarity. Um, You can see it coming up in the world around you right now. Just through the increase of negative polarity, it's all coming up to be released in the collective consciousness. So you can see it happening on a global scale. A lot of these things that are being released in the collective consciousness is also being released on an individual level. So if you feel these things coming up for you as an individual in your personal life, it's also because that energy is running through you to release that within you. Another thing I want to add is in regards to these energy waves coming to the planet. Yes, there are energy waves coming to the planet to help raise the frequency of the collective and shift the energies in the collective as well as the planet. Um, I was going to say that we can't necessarily turn to these things and expect these energy waves or whatever outside healing energies to do all the work for us. Like, It's not going to magically disappear or vanish everything, all the hindrances or blockages that we have, because that is still very possible. We still have to do the work ourselves. But what came through when I asked Abe, I said, is is that correct? And they said, no, there are some strong energy waves that, that can force the energy to be released from the person, that energy of hindrances or um, blockages or whatever, it can actually force that energy from the person or away from that person if it's strong enough. And I mean, maybe now as we get into these stronger energies on the planet, but I'm still going to put that disclaimer in that we can't look to outside sources to do the work for us. We still have to do a lot of the work ourselves. And from my own individual personal path, this is kind of the what I experienced where I would go and see healers. I would get in tune with the energy waves coming to the planet. But what I found was that it helped more so in bringing up what I needed to cleanse and clear in order for me to then do the work But, okay, here comes Abe and they're saying, well, technically, (laughs) these healing modalities did bring up what needed to be cleansed and released for me, but it also helped to release it for me by me becoming aware of them. It allowed or even forced that release of things that I had been holding on to um, just by allowing it to come into my awareness. It like allowed it to just evaporate for me, but it needed to come up first. I needed to recognize what those blocks were first, and then it could just dissolve into thin air. (laughs) But um, so they go hand in hand. They work together. Interesting. So I guess with the changing energy coming to the planet, like the higher frequency energy in the collective, all of the shifting taking place, We really are in a place, in a whole different place, like energetically, this, I don't think this forcing of energy, this forcing of releasing the blocks could happen so easily in just like five years ago. So I think like even with Abe really wanting people on the planet to bring up their lost knowledge, they've sort of been talking to me more about helping to open the heart in people because the heart, it's like your blockages and energy that no longer serves you very much is held in the heart and that heart needs to open in in order for your lost knowledge to pour forward and to help in that lost knowledge retrieval process so abe is kind of working with me to help you to open your heart so um, even in these messages they've told me there are activation codes that help to kind of stir things up inside of you 
activate that heart opening. Um, but I know that they have some things planned in the very near future to go even further in helping you to open up your heart so that this lost knowledge retrieval process can start happening faster in people all over the world and we can start bringing forward our information and knowledge and start building this 5d new earth and contributing in the way that we had originally planned to on a soul level um, in our mission and our purpose during this shifting time because we came here specifically for this shift, shifting out of 3D into 5D. Many of us want to already be in 5D and, you know, it's that impatience, it's that wanting um, your cake now even though it's not ready, but there's so much work that needs to be done right now and we need you to help do this work with us so that we can all reap the rewards as well, but it's very clear that we are in the shift and the reason why we are here on the planet is to help the collective, help Gaia to go through this shift um, and to make the shift into 5D and watch and help in the building up of 5D um, basically from the ground up. But we're doing it right now and it's an exciting time and that's what you need to know. So that's it for this video. Until the next one, Abe and Jess leave you in oneness and love.